the block, a lot of people in the states probably wonder, will the block be looking toward possibly another referendum? Is in that my just opinion, not, not is at that all. Not, not at all. And nothing, nothing that the bloc leaders said would suggest that. Again, what I saw is a thoughtful, careful campaign that said to Quebecers, you need someone from Quebec to, to listen to and look after your mm -hmm. interests. And traditionally, Quebecers have wanted that. That's been part of the argument. If they're not going to have any kind of a sovereignty association or, or straight up sovereignty arrangement, at the very least they would like direct representation in Ottawa. They would like to have their views heard every day. And I, I think that's where we arrived. That's that's how we got here. And 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 again I, I think you actually have to look at individuals and see what their success was and he did a fabulous job. Again, no histrionics he, were, he was fabulous in the French debate. He was mm -hmm. equally good in the English language. He just, he just did a good job. Is the economy at all a, a concern? There have been some layoffs announced just within the past few days. There have. It didn't seem to be a huge, huge issue during the election. Well, I mean, I would even go farther than that and say the, the election campaign was sort of what I called the Seinfeld election. It was sort of about nothing. It, it was a referendum on the prime minister. It was a referendum on his policies. Uh, but the world is much more complicated even than it was four years ago. Uh, massive movements towards populism in all parts of the world, mm -hmm. a pretty significant movement to the right generally, uh, a international economic and political system that is fragmenting. Uh, so, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of things going on here. The chances of there being a fairly significant global slowdown are high. Um, Canada has traditionally weathered those global recessions pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the pressure will be on him again to, to be able to manage that. Uh, we depend very heavily on trade and, and commerce with the United States and if there's a major recession in the United States, you know the old expression, uh, we're, we're sort of like the tail of the dog. When the dog's happy, the tail's up. When the dog's unhappy, <laughs> the tail's down. There's going to be some of that. Any provincial issues that are of concern in Ottawa and to the federal government. Uh, Bill 21 in Quebec, uh, the Safe Third Country Agreement is being challenged in court right now in Toronto. Uh, the government has said it would like to see that change so that uh, people coming to any point along the border yep. uh, would be treated the same, not just the official entry point. So that's, that loophole is what allowed yep. so many uh, yeah. 50,000 folks to cross through northern New York here in, into Quebec and, and w await their asylum here in hearings there in Canada. Any issues like that that are happening provincially that have really uh, well, could I think become national issues? I think you've identified the big two. I think the truth of the matter is in the short term the focus will be on what those policy issues might look like and where this government would be interested in having a more fulsome discussion than they've had in the past. Uh, the truth of the matter is, again, if, if we're looking, if, if you're one of those persons who says the country is definitely divided, and that's not me because I think we've been, we've been divided in different ways for a long time, I think you, you can point to the fact that virtually all of the provinces are governed by persons with different ideological views than the Prime Minister or different political preferences than the Prime Minister. So what we're going to do is we're going to see a series of challenges to the, this new government in Ottawa. Um, but honestly, I think uh, Mr. Kenny in Alberta has been smart and careful and focused and I'm, I'm imagining his priorities will be about assembling a team that represents uh, Alberta's interests in Ottawa and finding a way to make sure that that happens without any representation from Alberta. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mr. Ford, interestingly, has, has been fairly quiet and, and focused and he doesn't, he's not bombastic. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, he comes from sort of that tradition. Right, right. Uh, and I, but I think he's, I think he's systematically trying to pursue some policies that are attractive to and popular with the folks in, in Ontario. The Conservative Party has a bit of a, tr a, a populist tradition in Ontario, but I think it's a little bit different than other places, you know. So I don't, I don't see, I don't see any big showdowns in the short term, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you, as CEO of Fulbright Canada, 
spend a lot of time here in the United States on Capitol Hill. Yeah. For the folks who aren't familiar, tell us what Fulbright Canada, the program's uh, so primary our, mission is. Yeah, our, our mission quite simply is to identify extraordinary people, find ways to support them, and have them engaged in public life. We support people through the vehicle of academic exchange. So typically we have our people, our students and community leaders and professors, and typically they're at universities. But our sort of watchword is mutual understanding. It's engagement. We want people to be involved, whatever their politics is, whatever their, their preferences are, uh, we want people to show up. So we identify extraordinary people, we find ways to support them, we find ways to support community groups, and frankly, our view is that the movement of people is always positive. If I can live in your shoes for a few weeks, I all of a sudden know things that I didn't know. I appreciate things in ways that I didn't know before. So it really is, it's, it's that old fashioned notion of peace and parts. If I could, you know, if I could spend a little bit of time in Russia, I think I'd discover that most of the folks care about the things that I care about, mm -hmm. about a strong economy, about their healthy system and, and uh, arrangements for their children, about education for their children, about a roof over their head, you know, and I think one of our real goals has always been to make sure that people understand that our, our similarities and our commonalities are more impressive and more important than our differences. And when there's that understanding, there's better world relations. Well, we, we like to believe that, that peace, productivity, all are enhanced by a deeper understanding of other people. Michael Haas, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. We My appreciate pleasure. it.